deep inside fundamentalist Iran lies one of the nation's most controversial facilities. It doesn't produce some sort of secret weapon feared by the West, but condoms, and lots of them. It's a symbol of how the dogmatic religious conservatives who've ruled here for two decades can also display breathtaking political pragmatism. For these veiled women are on the front line, countering a threat to the very existence of the Islamic Republic. A population explosion. <laughs> At a medical centre in the Tehran suburbs, we're told to follow the green line. A line that leads to the unmentionable. A line that saves Iranian manhood the embarrassment of asking directions to the vasectomy clinic. You know that uh, the clients, especially because uh, our clients are men, they shame. Uh, they cannot ask anyone, oh, when I, I can go to cut my tube. Sayed Hashim Hosseini endures a nerve-wracking wait for what he hopes will be the kindest cut. The 38-year-old mechanic and father of two has finally relented to his wife's request to put his trust in Allah and in the hands of the surgeon. Are you very nervous? Are you very frightened about the procedure? Hashim's vasectomy is free paid for by the state, just one of 400,000 performed in the last decade. Part of a program all the more remarkable, as it has occurred under the guidance of an Islamic fundamentalist regime. For the nation's mullahs who forged their Islamic state through revolution, this is the vision splendid. A deeply faithful society, embracing, reliving the golden age of Persian Islam. Far from a decadent world, polluted by Western values where families are guided in their daily life by Islam's holy book, the Quran. It's a life where sex and contraception simply aren't discussed, as shrouded as the female form. But this is the reality that confronts the Moors. crowded, chaotic, youth formation. Struggling to get through the twists and turns of everyday life. Political reformists may have recently won a landslide victory in the parliament, but hardline religious leaders still control the social agenda. the watchful gaze of the morals police, this is about as much fun as you can have in public. Holding hands, hugging, any public displays of intimacy are banned. But in the last 20 years, the population has doubled to 70 million. 
so there's obviously been plenty of activity in the nation's bedrooms. It all started back in 1979. When the fundamentalist mullahs seized power, they urged the country to go forth and procreate. They wanted lots of young revolutionaries, and they wanted them now. Ten years down the track, Iran was facing a massive population explosion that threatened the very economic and social fabric of the nation. It was then that the mullahs did a complete about-face. It was time, they said, for Iran to take a collective cold shower. Contraception was no longer sinful, but deemed to be socially responsible. It was a decree that transformed businessman Kanran Hashimi into the condom king of the Middle East. He convinced the clerics that if Iranian men were going to be slipping on condoms, they might as well be Iranian condoms. Kanran proudly boasts that his is the only factory in the Middle East, a prophylactic gold mine running 24 hours a day. We call this JB, and this is the color and aroma, and this is for the export. So you've got an export yeah. market here? Yes, we have the export yes. for the Europe and the north part of Iran and Russia. Uh, we have about uh, 50 million pieces of condom, our capacity per year. And uh, about 70 or 65 percent of our production, it goes for Ministry of Health. Down in the quality control lab, they take their work seriously, a kind of patriotic duty. و از اونجایی که این کارخونه تنها کارخونه توی خاور میانه هست که مسئله تولید کاندوم رو داره و ما هم دستان در کاران این تولید هستیم به خودمون میبالیم که تونستیم تولید رو داشته باشیم که تقریبا به داد جهان سوم برسیم خوشبختان خانواده من و دوستان من با دید باز از این مسئله استقبال کردم و زیاد من رو در این مسئله دست من داختن While plenty of free condoms are handed around, family planners aren't so sure that young Iranians know what to do with them or any other form of contraception. خیلی پایینه چون میدونید ما قبل از ازدواج روابط دختر و پسر در کشورمون خیلی محدود و غیر معقوله غیر شرعیه به این خاطر ارتباطی وجود نداره در عمل و رو همین حساب هم اطلاعات خیلی خیلی پایین از نظر مسائل سکسوال برای اینها وجود داره مهمترین چیزی که الان برای شما هم But first, they have to attend compulsory sex education classes. For some, this is an excruciatingly embarrassing ordeal. Today, despite international plaudits for their program, family planners are still battling with conservatives who regard such courses as an abomination. خیلی اوقات پدر مادرهای این زوج مشکل داشتن در مورد این مسائلی که باز انقدر سر کلاس بر اینها مطرح میشه و حتی الان هم ما داریم تک و توک افرادی رو معمم هستن سر کلاس شرکت میکنن یا افرادی هستن که سن بالایی دارن و مقاومت میکنن نسبت مسائلی که تو کلاس باز میشه it was only three years ago that in the face of conservative opposition, the family planners convinced the government to repeal the religious law, permitting men to marry girls as young as nine. But such victories come at a price. Dr. Rosa can only lecture with a religious official watching her every move. And the men are separated from the women when it comes time to explain the more intimate mechanics of contraception. قرصش بود که نمیدونستم فقط در بیدستان هم این مسائل هست و دیاد میدم من تو خب امروز اینجا یه خورده تکمیته بود در مدرسه به صورت کتابیه ولی اینجا خب کاملا 
shaft is on. The state continues to maintain social control, even after wedlock. are taking the plunge and getting married. Behind closed doors, off come the Shadors. It's designer suits and accessories at 10 paces. They're both doctors, and they're full well that if they have more than three children, the government will introduce a little hip pocket contraceptive by cutting their extensive child subsidies. Meanwhile, back at the vasectomy clinic, Hashim discovers that the advertised no scalpel technique still involves blood and pain. Though he does his best to maintain a stiff upper lip throughout. 20,000 men have now gripped the sides of Dr. Farohari's operating tables. Hashim gets a little souvenir, bits of his plumbing left over from the operation. His wife would, uh, will like him, will love him more than last, because he has done this procedure just for uh, his wife to be more comfortable. Are you comfortable? Yes. He's good. Without pain. Without pain, without any... Uh, Complication. Oh, in the video, thank you. Next door at the clinic staff daycare centre, Dr. Oh. Farawahari shows that his doctors, despite their work, all have happy small families. He also gets in a plug for his sponsors, Iran's mullahs, who can't help but agree that children are God's gift just as long as there aren't too many of them. <laughs>